In this video, we are going to be giving the introduction to squaring up a block. In this video, we are not going to be cutting anything. We are actually just going to be going over why, why it's important to square up a block accurately. And in the next following videos, I've seen on the internet and people have taught me one way to square up a block and they teach one way to square up a block. Well, there are several different ways to square up a block because there are different shapes and sizes and things of that nature. So in the next couple videos, we're gonna be showing you different ways to square up a block. And I'm gonna show you the way I use 90% of the time and then we'll go from there. All right, right now I'm just gonna be telling you some of the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a dead blow and uh, make sure it's the one that has sand in it. You don't want the rubber ones that bounce everywhere and you don't wanna get a, um, a ball peen hammer because it can actually dink your part. If you're gonna use anything, I would suggest a brass hammer, but most of the time I use a dead blow. Uh, you'll need your block of material that you're gonna be squaring up. You are going to be needing a, uh, some calipers, safety glasses, uh, a file so you can debar the part, some parallels, and an indicol and indicator and your tool that you're going to be cutting with, okay? And now let me get to why it's important to square up a block accurately. Everything from the print you look at to all the holes to the slots to the keyways, everything that's involved with a milled part, not necessarily a lathe part, but a milled part, starts with squaring up a block and sometimes you're able to profile it on a CNC and things like that, but that's still technically squaring up a block whenever you profile something, flip it and deck it. It still needs to be square. And what square means is 90 degrees to each other. Some people think that just because their block is parallel and everything's to size, they don't register that it needs to be perfectly perpendicular 90 degrees. And we're gonna show you guys how to check that with an indicator, not with a square, because sometimes that can be off uh, five thou and you're not going to know because you won't be able to see that with a square so what you can do is look in our next video and we're going to show you guys how to check a block for square accurately with an indicator and a surface table all right now we're also going to be showing you guys how to rough a lot of meat real fast with a shell mill an end mill and things like that because some people take 20 thou cuts and they take two hours to square up a block as opposed to 30, 40 minutes to square up a block completely to size and that's taken a half inch off. Not a half inch at a time, but they have a, a total of half inch material to take off. But back to what I was saying, the reason you wanna be square is because everything after square, the holes, the slots, the keyways, will be affected by how square your part is. If your part's not square, when you put it in the vise, it could be cocked at an angle. And when you edge fine, you could be five thou off, which could kill a part. Especially if you're working in the medical industry or automotive or something like that. So you want to make sure you get your basis of squaring up a block before you move on to anything else. Because it is very, very, very important to learn how to square up a block before you start drilling holes and all of that. All right, and we're also gonna be going over how to rough aluminum. You don't wanna use a shell mill, you wanna use a fly cutter and plastic and things like that. We're gonna be showing you guys how to sharpen the fly cutter. And it's gonna be really in depth when it comes to squaring up these blocks because we don't wanna skip anything because people will try to put information online and they run over it real fast and they may get a lot of likes, but in the end, when those people go out there and they try to do it, they don't have enough information to do it the right way. So you can watch the next following videos, pick which way works best for you. I'm not saying my way is the best way. It's just a way that definitely works for me and I can, I can get it done fast, all right? And another thing you're, you're gonna wanna get is a marker. Uh, a lot of people use a marker to mark the sides of the block so that they know which side they just cut so they can put it to the back of the, the jaw. And you want to make sure that your head is trimmed in, everything's nice and clean. Every time you cut a face, you want to be deburred. You want to get a stone. That's another thing that you need to get is a stone. Make sure you stone the face that you just cut and the sides. So when you put it back in the vise, there's no burrs moving the part around, okay? Because the tiniest chip, the very tiniest chip can kill your part. 
just because you're sitting flat on the parallels, the parallel could be under a chip and there goes your part. So if you're working with close tolerances or big tolerances, it really doesn't matter. The first thing you need to know when it comes to making parts is how to square up a block. So in the next video, let's go over how to check a block on a surface plate and then we'll move into actually how to start cutting the block from beginning to finish. And then we're going to be going over long shapes such as a thin part that's long. We're gonna be showing you guys how to square that up because just because it works on this part does not mean that it's gonna work on a long skinny part. So like I said, there are different ways to square up a block. The main thing is in the end, your part is dimensionally to size and intolerance and you're square. So let's uh, go ahead and go to the inspection room and start inspecting a already machined block.